Hello and welcome to Restoration DIY. In this episode, I'll be turning a fairly simple bowl from an ash blank and finishing it with Joe Sonia iridescent paint. So let's get into it. The first job was to get the blank roughly to round. I drilled a hole in the centre of the ash, placed it on the circle cutting jig and used the bandsaw to cut away the waste. Sadly, I forgot to record the next bit, so after mounting the blank to the lathe using the woodworm screw and securing it in place with a tailstock, you join me partway into shaping the outside. I started roughing the shape out with a combination of the half and the three eighths of an inch bowl gouges, but my half inch gouge needs a bit of work. I would like to get it to a more swept back profile, so for now, the three eighths gouge did most of the work. I was intent on keeping this bowl nice and simple, so I kept on removing material, stopping occasionally to check that all the bark had gone. This meant taking off more than I would have preferred, but the bowl would still be a good size at the end of it. In the next clip you'll see that there's still a bit to take off, but also you can see that tear out is becoming a big issue. going slowly shear scraping material away. For reference the lathe is spinning at around 1000 rpm. Looking back I think increasing the speed might have helped with a tear out but at the time I wanted to get to the point where the bark was more or less gone then use the negative rate scraper to rectify the problem. The negative rate scraper took away most of the tear out but I wasn't happy with the size and proportions of the bowl. So I set to with a gouge reshaping the outer surface, finishing off with a skew chisel blending and fairing the curves until I was satisfied with the look. definitely helped with the overall appearance and with that done I moved on to forming the mortise in the base. The dovetail cutter and bowl gouge took care of the mortise and then it was time for a sanding from 80 to 400 grit. Sanding complete, I applied two good coats of sanding sealer and then de-nibbed with a non-abrasive scotch pad. It's important to get plenty of sealer onto the bare wood to prevent the finish in the next stage bleeding through to the finished inside surface. You can see that there is still some tear out, but I wasn't too worried about that because I had a plan of how I would deal with it later on. then time for stage one of the finishing process. I would spray the outer surface with ebonizing lacquer. This one is made by Chestnut. I sped the lathe up to around 300 rpm and applied the lacquer, using a heat gun in between coats to speed up the drying time. Gave the lacquer time to dry, then it was time for stage two in the process. Joe Sonia iridescent acrylic paint. A quick disclaimer, this is the first time I've used this paint, so after pouring a small amount of turquoise, red, blue and gold out onto a plastic lid, I mixed in about 40% flow medium and began applying it to the bowl. It wasn't necessary to use a brush to apply the paint, the wooden mixing sticks were more than adequate. It was just a case of loading the surface with enough paint for what was going to happen next. The 
what I thought would be enough paint, I then wrapped the whole outer surface of the bowl in cling film with the least amount of wrinkles as possible. With the film covering the surface, I began smushing the paint all over the ebonizing lacquer. There was no real plan to this, except to make sure the paint reached all the way to the upper and lower edges and there was no more uncovered bare patches. When I removed the cling film it was obvious there was too much paint on the surface, so I set to with the kitchen roll patting the paint away, being careful not to mix the colours together any more than they already were. Then I reapplied a fresh piece of cling film and repeated the smushing process, but not as much as before as I only wanted to even out the coverage. With the cling film removed, I still wasn't sure if it would dry without the light patches, but eager to see the results, I used the heat gun on its lowest setting to dry the paint. And it was okay. The iridescent paint dried with no light marks, and I was very happy with it. So I moved on to the last stage. I applied four coats of clear lacquer. I chose to protect the surface with chestnut melamine gloss lacquer, because it was on my shelf and it's all I had. I used the heat gun to dry between each coat and then I tidied up the base. I used a skew chisel to remove the paint down to the wood and then I sanded and applied sanding sealer. I didn't lacquer it as I wasn't sure if it would slip on the chuck. So with the outside finished and the lacquer dry enough to handle, I turned the bowl around, mounted it on the four-jaw chuck in the mortise and secured it in place with a tailstock. To begin with, I started hollowing out the inside with a 3 8 bowl gouge. The wood was very dry and it wasn't cutting very easily. I persevered for a while, eventually switching over to a freshly sharpened half inch bowl gouge, which didn't seem to do any better, so I went back to the smaller gouge. Whilst doing the inside, I resharpened the gouge about three times to keep a good edge on it. gouge I was able to quickly remove material and the tear out I suffered on the outside was not nearly as bad on the inside. For reference, the lathe is spinning around 900 to 1000 rpm. With the bulk of the material removed, I whittled a piece in the middle down to a point where I could just remove the tailstock and snap it off. The tailstock restricts access into the bowl, so with it removed I was able to use the bowl gouge to do a cut from the rim down into the centre or at least that was a plan. A few times I lost the cut line and I had to pick it up again, but eventually I got a few good continuous runs.
I was happy with the overall shape, I used the large negative brake scraper to blend and fare the inside. And with some final tidying up on the rim with a skew chisel, it was ready for sanding from 80 to 400 grit. Nicely sanded, it was ready for finishing. I cleaned down with denatured alcohol and applied two coats of sanding sealer, which are denibbed with a non abrasive scotch pad. to thoroughly dry the sealer and then I applied around four more coats of chestnut melamine gloss lacquer. Off camera I sanded the lacquer on the outside with 600 grit to knock off any high spots. So I added a couple of additional coats over the inside and the outside. Between each coat I use the heat gun to speed up the drying process. This works very well. And despite the amount of sawdust in close proximity to the bowl, I didn't get any in the wet lacquer. Just one more thing to do. The remaining tear out on the outside surface was still visible close up. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to basically enhance it with gold gilt cream. It's what I intended to do right from when I first saw it. The gilt cream is very easy to apply. Just rub it onto the surface and polish it off. And that's it, something a bit different this time. I hope you enjoyed it. I have some more projects coming up using similar finishes, so keep a lookout for those in the future. And don't forget to press the bell to be alerted whenever I publish a new video. Also, if you would give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and comments are always welcome. Many thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.